Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to demonstrate a technique that I've developed for attempting to control frame generated frames via model states. So just to be perfectly clear, out of the box, there is no current way to tie frame generator to model states. So the frame generator subassembly doesn't have model states and I cannot tie the two together with a model state from a top level assembly, therefore. So I'm gonna use a little bit of eye logic, a little bit of elbow grease, and we'll go from there. So what I've done, just to kind of highlight what I'm talking about, is I've got a top level assembly with a frame in it, and I can now take that and say no doors, but if I end up with a frame that requires a door, I can double click on that and now different frame members turn on or off. So I'm gonna to endeavor to show you how this works. So this is all based on a skeletal model. And you can see here the skeleton is um, <clears throat> got a couple of sketches, one with just the regular wall. So if this was just a regular wall and I'm using 24 inch on center spacing for these structural members, that's just the wall. But then if we end up having a door and we could, of course, make whatever knockouts we want. I'm just doing this as an example, a door. Then that's a separate sketch that we can use to control the design. So in our design, then, what I did was I applied that frame to the skeleton. And the members that are always going to be used, right, top, bottom, left, right, they're going to be the same. And then I did an intermediate one here. And then I simply reuse that same component for every other position inside for the structural wall. Then, this is very important, I then modeled the door framing using that other sketch and the separate members. But I add, added the underscore door to the end of each one of those when I named and saved the file names. That's going to be really important for this method. So once we've done that, then I created a couple of different model states, one where there's no door and the <clears throat> framing goes all the way across. And then of course, if I wanted a single door. So that was the premise behind trying to control this. And so we have the model states and when we toggle them, it does indeed do what we ask. But in order to get this to work, we did have to use some eye logic. So if I dive into the iLogic, I'm going to explain how this works, and then I'm going to do a blog post that actually has the code so you can take a look at it. But I'll walk through the rule so you can see how it works. So inside the rule, of course, we're going to be taking a look at uh, all the assembly level stuff. We're going to go through occurrences. And so we're going to have a couple different assemblies we're looking at, right? We specifically want to get the frame assembly so just based on the way I name my frame members, any occurrence that has the term frame in it, well, that's going to be my frame assembly. So at least now we've got that. So inside of that, because we need to do a little compare and contrast, right? Because if you think about a structural wall, all of those members are there. But if we need a door, there's going to be some members that overlap each other. So we're going to do uh, an, an analyze interference operation to figure out which ones interfere. So to do that, I made two collections, one of all the frame members and then one with the frame members that contain doors. So if we go through every single frame member in that frame assembly, if it had an underscore door, it went into the door collection. If it didn't, it made a separate collection. So this is the part that gets interesting. We suppress we unsuppress everything, and then what we do is we do the interference detection behind the scenes, and we see between the collection of door frames and doors which ones interfere with each other. So that produces a result. And so then we <clears throat> do the result, and we say for each result in that collection, so if three members interfere with the door, then three members would be analyzing the interference. If we're using the model state no doors, then we just <clears throat> we uh, uh, suppress every single one of the door frame members. However, 
if we have the model state that does contain the doors or single doors, then we're going to suppress the results that interfere with the door <clears throat> uh, from each group. So depending on which group is which, we'll suppress the ones that interfere with each other, but we would unsuppress the doors. So that's basically how the code works. And then <clears throat> in addition to the code, if you go to the Manage tab and we look at the event trigger, I'm also triggering that particular rule to run anytime a model state is activated. So if I hit OK and I go back to the model, that's why when I change to single door, because these two interfere with that door framing you kind of see in the sketch behind. When I click on single door, those two get suppressed, right? And we can look inside here. These two got suppressed. All the door members came back on, and that's how we would have that wall work. We can also go over here to the skeletal model, of course. And if we make changes, like say we were to increase the length of the wall or we increase the height, let's say let's make it 130, right? That skeletal model increases in size a little bit. And then that should update here and you see your frame adapt to that, right? So it still works just the same way as we did before. It's just now we've added uh, an iLogic backdoor, if you will, to control the, the suppression of the frame members, it, you know, depending on which model state we trigger. So hopefully Autodesk gives us a, a better solution long-term, but this is a method for overcoming that. The only drawback to this method, if I go to the complete design, is I would have to make a copy design for like a left or a right or a north and a south wall because I can't have the same wall be two different things with this method just because frame generator doesn't have a pure model state itself. So like I said, it's a workaround, but if you're trying to get around that for now, it works, but you'll have to have a different wall assembly per occurrence. So just throwing out that warning. Hope you found this tip helpful and intriguing. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions below and have a blessed day.